listening to Average Joe's Chess, a chess podcast made by average chess players, but exceptional lovers. Just the uh, <laughs> the message that you sent me on the way back. Oh, message. You know. oh, so I was message. traveling back from Wales, absolutely uh-huh. shattered. Could barely keep my eyes open on the road. Um, I'll say that as if I was driving. I was the passenger, being a little bitch. <laughs> but I was just, <laughs> I just messaged you saying, "Oh, can we bring the recording down to five o'clock?" Because I don't think I'll be awake for the usual seven o'clock. And mm-hmm. I think you just said, uh, "Drink some coffee and stop being a little pussy," which was it was the words <laughs> of wisdom I needed to see me home. It was lovely. You can always re- rely on me for that uncle wisdom, Joe. First, it's what you're there for, man. It was beautiful. It's all so, I'm yeah, I'm for. ready to go, man. I'm tired, but well, I'm going to push on through. Let's do episode 21, then, Joe. First, let's do it, man. Let's do it, Joe. First, what we got coming up today? So I believe <laughs> we're going to be exploring some openings, aren't we? Uh, right. Let's... I made a note on my notepad here saying no smart. I just think no smut in that. that was, that's genuinely what we're doing. With we're exploring smut. openings. Already. Listen to you. You've got such schoolboy <laughs> humour. We're going to be exploring openings. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what we're doing. And there's going to be innuendos all over it the is. place, isn't there? It, it, well, do you think we can do it without innuendos? I don't think we can. I don't, I don't think we have the level of maturity capable of doing <laughs> no, that. we don't. Maybe when we're grown-ups, we'll be better. One day, our dream of that One day. Bit. But yeah, we're going to be doing some openings. We're going to mm-hmm. also... Oh, everything sounds like an innuendo, doesn't it? We are going to be doing some openings. We're going to <laughs> also be <laughs> recapping on last week's challenges. So we set each other a challenge every week, recapping on that. Talking about the chess club, which is coming along nicely. You're going to have some tournaments oh, coming is. soon. All of that mm-hmm. good stuff. We're going to be doing the draw, aren't we, on, on air? Live. Sort of yeah, live. the rig draw. For us, I mean, the non rig draw. The the, the, rig, the non-rig draw or the rig the draw? The non-rig draw, yeah, sorry. I, the I non-rig draw, enough. we're going to do that yeah. to find out who wins this week's one-month Diamond membership. That's coming up at some point in the show. We're also going to be giving away another one, maybe, shall we? We'll see. Let's do it, fuck it. Go Let's on. do it, yeah. Um, yeah, I've made notes, but do you know what? I can't actually read my notes, so I spent an hour before the podcast. I wrote down mm. about six pages of notes in that book I was showing you in my little notebook. <laughs> And I know you're saying I'll do it all electronically and all of that, Mm -hmm. but I just can't read them. And um, (laughs) I did ask electronically, man. (laughs) I did ask someone for. I said, "What can I do? I need to learn how to take better notes." And they just went, "Use a pen." I I just use pencil. I don't know. I always (laughs) write in pencil, and I just can't read what I've put. So I should. I'm going to switch before I give in to electronic note taking. I'm going to switch to pen and see how that goes. Okay, it's a nice upgrade. I like that. I like that. It is a good um, upgrade. So I, Just I'm going to guess what your notes might have said. So I think mm-hmm. it would have been uh, some stuff about how you're a bit of a little bitch. And then I think in terms mm-hmm. of the stuff about the actual podcast itself, I think you would have been saying maybe we'd start with a little recap of our weeks or our chess weeks. God, you, you must have read my notes or been present for all the last podcast where we started in yeah, exactly that the way. same. For- <laughs> yeah, why do you need to keep notes when we do the same format every week? <laughs> I, I just don't know. It just makes me feel better about it. You just like to feel like you're doing something, don't you? <laughs> exactly right. I want to feel like we're pros, which we are. We are pros, aren't we? I mean, we are. you're not recording in your loft holding a microphone because you're too cheap to buy a stand. I'm not lying in bed. <laughs> With my microphone stand <laughs> broken, using some improvised bit of kit I've put together that actually wrecked the sound last week and made me sound like some sort of distorted robot. We're this pros. is what the professionals do, man. <laughs> People don't come to us for, for professionalism. They come because we're average lovers. No, 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 no. Average no, no, chess no. players. Exceptional yes. lovers. There we go. Yeah, exactly. God, that was close. <laughs> Almost well, lost our whole Joe brand. Was- how much chess should we put into this? We, you know, I did get a message from someone saying they believe that we don't talk enough chess. I think they calculated mm. we talk twenty percent, which I thought was generous. I'm I'll sure we don't that, talk twenty yeah. percent. <laughs> Bloody hell! Um, I have a feeling they might have given us a, 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 you know, not a very nice rating on Spotify, so and that's entirely up to them. But yeah. if someone's listening to this and they want to make up for that, give us a five star <laughs> rating right now. I'd be very happy with that. And we'll talk. And um, what sort of percentage should we talk today, Joe? Fils? I think twenty percent is fair. I'll take that because I mean, if they want, the... we're just average it. chess players, aren't we? We don't know anything what about do we chess. Know? <laughs> we don't know anything about chess. We just why have we got, got a chess, chess podcast, podcast though? 
Right, listen, let's start with chess. Tell me about your chess week, Jokers. What what have you, you been up to? How's it been? It's been nice. It's been scenic. I um I took a picture mm. earlier, so I thought it'd be good to kind of take really scenic chess pictures. So I set up my chess board because oh, I was in, nice. I was in Wales when I for the weekend. Chess and, on um, location. Chess on location. So it's just a beautiful shot of the beach in the background and um the sea and the scenery and all that. Chess board set up. Didn't play a single game, but it looked good, which is the main <laughs> thing. It's um uh, Jokers, I see a pleasing. lot of that. I see a lot yeah. of that on Twitter. I see people posing in front of chess boards that are really nicely sort of scenery around them or lying draped across a bed in a sexy way yeah. like I am right now with a chess board in front of them and a cat or a dog looking at the board. But just with really, like, crap positions that you can see aren't genuine chess positions. I don't know. It just yeah. seems a bit well, weird I, to me. I'll you fall, did that then. Fall. Yeah, I fell victim to that, so that's exactly what I did. <laughs> but you'll also be happy to know some interesting chess news. I played a rapid game this week. What? I rated played three rapid your... games. What? Rated yeah. on your rated. rapid account? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So, I mean, if, if, if anyone doesn't know, Joe has a rapid rating of 1820-something, or did have. I'm not sure what he's got now. It was 1800 for one, and I had to cajole him into uh, playing it because he just holds on to that rating like, he holds on to his testicles in a gale. Um, <laughs> that was really beautiful. That was poetry. That was. Oh, thanks, man. Um, but now I've got this horrible it's sort of image in my head. So I'm just going to get rid of that image. And uh, so, yeah, I challenge Joe to, um, to basically play and see what happens to that rating. And you have actually done it. Yeah, I was thinking about games. your therapy. How did you get on three games? Three games. So I did lose two, I think, and I won one. And I mm -hmm. should be upset. But I just enjoyed the games. I enjoy playing did them. You? And um yeah, one game the the game that I won was just a really sexy checkmate. It was lovely, it just kinda of came Ooh. out of nowhere and um that was beautiful. The two games I, I lost the sexy I realised that Oh, you can't beat them. But the two games mm. I lost, I realised that I was really engaged in every single move. But I think once you get to maybe like eighteen hundreds ish, one mistake you fucked. Ooh. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like I'm blowing my own trumpet, doesn't it? Uh, but I'm gen genuinely, it's like I'd make the one, and it'd just be a, a positional error, not even a blunder. I'd make a positional error, and I'd just be like, oh, that's me done now. And they'd take advantage, maybe get one pawn up, and I'd, yeah, I'd be buggered. I suppose when at a lower rating, you can make that mistake. Often I'll think, well, I'm not resigning. I made a mistake. Chances are they're going to make a mistake. However, yeah. I mean... I have watched some of the, um, is it called the Speed Chess Championships that's been yeah, on this week? I think so. And you even see them making the odd mistake. I mean, not like my level of mistake of just forgetting to take pieces that are hanging or leaving a queen hanging. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they, they do, do make, you know, make mistakes at all levels, especially under time pressure. Mm -hmm. 100%. Although... Well, they do hang queens from time, maybe not queens, but they do hang pieces. Like, I wouldn't mm. do yourself a disservice. Like, I genuinely, I've seen grandmasters do some atrocious things. Are you, um, what sort of time control did you play? Was it 10 minutes, 15? No, no. Uh, yeah, I mixed it up. I did 15 plus 10 second increment, I think. So it took mm -hmm. about six hours to find an opponent because no one else plays that. But in that time, <laughs> <laughs> I think I just got so tired. I just wasn't ready to play. So yeah, I'm not doing that again. I think 10 minutes is my kind of thing. Wow. Did you, um, get to actually play any games over the board then? Because you must have had a board with you if you were taking pictures of a chess board. Yeah, I had a board with me because I'm training up my chess prodigy for our what? upcoming chess challenge, and I. What? Okay, yep, we'll talk yep, yep, about yep. that in a minute. So you uh, actually have you not? Okay, okay, okay. I'll, so um, you I'll actually it, but... took your chess champion on holiday. Tell us in a minute, but that is impressive, Joe. First, yep, yep, yep. yep you yep, actually yep. took oh, your. You are taking this seriously, like taking your chess champion on holiday with you. Is there a prize at stake? Because I'm acting like there is, but I don't think there is, is there? Can there be? All, let's put a little bit on. There's always a prize at stake. It's let's honor, it it's tasty, pride. Yeah. Okay, let's think about this. I'm not going to commit to anything right now, but yeah, let's make okay. it tasty. All right, okay, all right, let's do you it. You got anything in mind? It doesn't have to Seven be monetary. Pound 50. Oh, as much Six as that. £6.50, because I, yeah, Six I, fifty. Show I think that's a bit much. Right, yeah, yeah, let's do that, but we could get our champions to put up the money. That could yeah. be their coaching for <laughs> it's a win -win, the deposit. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Give them a bit of motivation. I mean, they're not going to want to lose £6.50, are they? Oh, God, no. Who would? Who would? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the rapid. Uh, it's um, Yeah, I'm going to start playing uh, yeah, a little bit more often. And, um, yeah, I'm going to let go of that rain. I don't what, care about what it. What would you do if your rating dropped to, like, 1,500 or something? 
Had there had been nothing <laughs> left to live for, I'd be gone. <laughs> oh, and yet that's higher than probably like the majority of people listening in right now because you know I'm lower than that, or I'm just about that sort of rating. But the reason um, I don't want to lose it is because I don't deserve it either. I'm not a good player. I don't know how I got it. I just, you know, when you have a good run of form, there was like two, three mm-hmm. months where I just felt like I saw chess differently. And now I've gone back to being my average self. Think, so I don't think I'll hold on to that for much longer. You should have a little bit more self-belief, uh, man. I should, I should. It's, um, I don't know, but I have an uncle who berates me week in, week out on a podcast yeah. and my self-belief has just been diminished. It's all part of your training, Joe, as you know that. I'm toughening you up, man. It's true. I'm feeling tough. I'm feeling good. Let's. Uh, anyway, how's your chess week been now? Um, yeah, it's been quite interesting. I did something a bit different with chess this week. I'm just trying to look at my shit notes that I told you about. I've made some notes yep. on what my chess week was like. Um, I just can't actually find it. Oh, yeah, here they are. Yeah, so I, that was it. I did something I don't normally do um, in chess. No, not win Joe first. I occasionally <laughs> do too. This was actually I um I started playing those twenty four hour daily matches. Have you ever tried Ooh, them? I haven't, you know. Are they good? I thought this is gonna be so boring. I'm really enjoying them. I mean I've only got one on the go at once. Yeah. Um I need to I see some people have like ten on the go. And I can understand why, because sometimes you're waiting for like eight hours for someone to make mm-hmm. a move. Um, and I, I had to train myself. No wonder you ain't picking up my bloody calls. Honestly, you've been oh, so well. hard to get hold of. You've just been I've waiting just been for that move. Sitting there waiting. That's what I'm training <laughs> myself out of. I'm actually now not going to sit there for eight hours. I'm going to get up, do things instead of just I sitting like staring at my at the position on the board for eight hours. But um, I, I did mention that uh, J Minto forty seven, first person I played J Minto forty seven on chess.com, top my daily virginity. And <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and they absolutely smashed me into the ground, man. They battered me. <laughs> they really did. <laughs> it's not really the kind of accolade someone wants to their name. <laughs> <laughs> well, and actually, they even joined our chess club afterwards. Oh, um, lovely. Welcome. I love that. Yeah, welcome, Jay Minto47. Thanks for the game. I'm sure we'll have quite a few more. Um, and so, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I've got one on the go at the moment that's taking absolutely ages, and I can just see it's going to take a lot longer. But I, what I love about them, okay, there's the opportunity for people to cheat, obviously, but then I just think, you know what, I'm not interested in what my rating is. So if they're going to cheat and use a, an engine, well, it's just yeah. like me playing a chess computer, so who cares? Mm-hmm. And if I get beaten, I get beaten. That's how it goes. But I would imagine that most people aren't going to cheat. They're just going to play fairly. Um, and so it's just interesting getting that move through and then spending ages playing through all of the other, all of my options and not just mm. going for anything. And then before committing, going through them all again and actually just, you know, trying to work out where it's going to go. I'm quite enjoying it. And also you can have a bit of chat because oh, it, you can cute. chat for much longer than in a night. Get one a try, see what you think. You know what? We should do an episode on daily chess because I think there must be some kind of... I don't know, like, surely it's got to be good for you. It's got to be a good way to learn chess because it's the best way to think about each position in, like, massive amounts of... Exactly. I don't know, it's got to be good for you, surely. I think I think there's less leeway for error, less margin for error in that than when you're playing right. And there's no time control, no pressure, other than 24 hours per move. It could take bloody ages, couldn't it? That's why you have a lot of games on the go. And do you reckon you could have five men at one time? Do you reckon you'd have five men on the go? Could I do Does five men good? at the same time? Five, five men, five women? I, five I could women do anything. I, I yeah. think so. I think once I've thought about all my moves, how I'm going to execute and which openings I'm going to use, um, I'm sure I could. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I could do multiple people at the same time. Pretty sure of that. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> I think I've got um, what it takes. And okay. Think, and, you know what? I think and it kind of leads us on to our talk. What was that? My rating wouldn't be too bad either, I reckon. It's true. You know. Yeah. Anyway, what we say leads us on to... I was just saying you take in five at the same time kind of mm-hmm. leads us on to our topic of openings and different... Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, shall we head on to that? In fact, no, we're kind of skipping forward a little bit, aren't we? You're skipping way forward, Joe. Yeah, I, I, mean, I always get excited sh- and kind of run through the podcast. I think we should leave the juicy stuff till the end, really. 
Oh yeah, let's do it. All right. Oh, so what we got next for me? Um. Well, how's your week been, Joe? First, then let's we've done oh, a bit of chess. Good, Just man. tell us you've been on holiday. It's been good. Oh. That's nice. Oh, it's been lovely. Went to Newquay in Wales, not Newquay mm-hmm. in Cornwall. So Newquay, two mm-hmm. words. Didn't know it was a place. It's um tiny little seaside place that just has literally nothing it's like three or four restaurants and a few coffee shops that kind of thing a few bars um it's just so relaxing man it's just so lovely i kind of i went in the sea did a bit of paddle boarding uh did some swimming you know the kind of thing you do when you're younger we you just like jumping into waves jumping over waves mm-hmm. just having mm-hmm. fun and uh oh, i loved it man it was genuinely the best really oh nice did you do any olympic sports in the water like we do in sicily I didn't, but I, I did unearth some of the videos of us doing the Olympics in Sicily, and uh, they are <laughs> it's the slow mo camera footage of you. I, well, not of you, that you were doing, sorry, you was recording. Oh, man, still brings a smile to my face. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Joe. First, sounds like a good week. Where, where have, you, have you been at work this week as well? Yeah, yeah, so I was at work uh, and then went down Friday evening, I think it was, or Saturday. Um, but yeah, yes, work is work, is work man. It's uh, when See can we just kind of sack it all off and just do the podcast well when we get enough um subscribers to our patreon then we'll do Perfect. that and then this podcast so will be even better we've got one amazing subscriber called joe which i think is great on, but Love anybody that. can join you don't have to be called joe you know just have a look at our patreon joe okay. our joe here on the podcast no not you joe because i was talking yeah. to everyone else if you if you subscribe to our patreon we sort of then spending more money than we need to on the podcast Mm, that, that's a good we point. want it. Okay. We want it sort of flow inwards. Yeah, I'll refrain. Okay. Yeah, well, just subscribe anyway. Do it as well. It'll be. In <laughs> fact, it would double our numbers if you do it. It would. But yeah, so I mean, that's one thing we could do. And as we talk in openings, have you found any new openings this week, Joe? First, not chess. I mean, for jobs. I know you want to uh, leave. Yeah. You know, I, I know I want to go into marketing. I know I want to go into the, like the kind of content creator side of things, so photography, videography, any of that kind of stuff. And yeah, I found so many jobs that just look amazing. It's um, but it's one of those. It's just where, you don't. When they, well, it's when they ask like, oh, what marketing <laughs> experience? Have, oh wait, what did you say? I can see you smiling. No, carry on. Carry on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll listen when I when I edit it back, and I may or may not be offended. We'll see. Um, yeah, whenever they ask, like, have you got any marketing experience and stuff? All I can really say is that I've got this podcast and uh, putting that. But then they're just going to see that I've got a bloody podcast with a guy with a bishop knob hanging out on the front cover and stuff. Well, it's not very professional. Like, it's not going to get me a job anytime soon, is it? Oh, Matt. Well, listen. If uh, you, the listener, listening in, you want to give Joe some sort of job, he'll do anything for you. You, you could oh, do any sort of anything. job. He'll do anything. Ignore <laughs> Don't what he just pimp me out online, man. Like, <laughs> I'm pimping Joe out. Anybody want Joe, send me a message. Average <laughs> oh, Joe's man. chess at gmail.com. We'll get Joe over to you. I mean, if you pay his travel, he'll come. Won't you, Joe? First? <laughs> You'll do it. Have Joe. Oh. like Joe, for, I've seen you without a top on, right? You're not too bad. I reckon you could Thank be you. in a hot climate, sort of doing somebody's oh, garden. Well, I, I or... don't doubt my success rate. It's just I have morals. I don't want to be pimping myself out. Ah, sod morals, Jofers. You talk to me every week. You can't have that like high morals. You present this podcast. I mean, some would say there's a difference like. between talking to your uncle on a podcast and pimping yourself out to blokes online. Anyway, if you want Jofers, drop us a line. <laughs> Our top Patreon level, and you get Jofers like for a month. <laughs> okay, I just need to shout out Joe the Patreon. I'm not gonna suck you. I'm not gonna. There's, I don't know what I was getting at here. I'm not. I'm not. Gonna, I don't know what I was getting at. I don't know what you promised our Patreons, but it's chess related stuff. Don't get. I don't know. Don't get out of our depths here. Jofers, I'm like trying to get you a job here, man. Stop talking yourself <laughs> out of work. Some, oh, what if somebody oh, on listening in offers you like a thousand dollars a week to mow their lawn? You're gonna yes, take it? Sound. Yeah. There we go. What if it was like in America or something and they'll fly you over there and all you've got mm-hmm. to do is mow their lawn and other stuff occasionally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's move on. Let's just move let's on. Let's move on. Come on. Uh, yes, so, okay, yes, yeah. Let's move on. Okay, yeah. My week, Joe, first. I know you're not going to ask me. Nah. Um, yeah, should ditch, we ditch my week? Yeah. Wasn't that, that interesting? Your week been? It just wasn't that interesting. I had uh, Marcus <laughs> come over from Qatar, you know, my friend oh, in yeah. Qatar. Prince he came Trinidad, over with his, guy. yeah, Prince of Trinidad with his son. Son starting uni. Um, his son is also my godson. He's starting uni in the UK. He's going to be over here on his own. Uh, stayed the night. 
uh, I made disastrous pizzas. They all went wrong, getting pretty stressed with it all. I just wanted to go to the pub opposite my house, sink a quick pint, finished our pizzas off, walked over there. Pub was shut. We had to drive into town, um, got into a pub. It was 10 to 11. They wouldn't serve us. Went to second pub, wouldn't serve us. Went to third pub, two minutes to 11, bought a pint and a half. I wanted to buy him a drink because he's 18 now, so I thought it'd be nice to buy him a drink, you know, in a UK pub. Um, I'd written him a list of stuff, you know, advice for uni. I'm his godfather, like pay your own way, okay. ask for help if yep. you need it, make sure you eat good, uh, grow a moustache, send me a brown paper envelope every week with cash in it, make nice. sure you're connected to your own headphones when you're watching porn, yeah. stuff that everybody <laughs> needs... I mean, he listened to him, he took it all in, and then he just looked at his phone. I mean, surely at one point when you took somebody to the pub when they're 18, and it's, I know he'd drunk before, I'm sure he's had alcohol before, but mm -hmm. we only had a pint. I don't know, I, thought, I was expecting a bit more engagement. Do you remember your first pint when you were 18 in the pub? I do, that was with you, wasn't it? It was a good time. Was it? I don't remember. It was lovely. <laughs> it obviously didn't mean anything to Shows me. It was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh dear yeah maybe I do. anyway that was my week joe let's so just sum it up very quickly ah it sounds lovely man it sounds lovely it's a uh, good advice as well to the uh the uni student godson i like that oh, i remember so. you did show me the paper with all the advice on and the number 16 was to wash your balls at least once a week and that at is least once advice, a week yeah yeah actually do you know what happened he went to uni uh, his dad was worried about him making friends. I thought it's going to be hard for the poor guy. He sent us a phone, and he's got a regular steady girlfriend as well. We were talking about can it last long distance relationship, mm. all that. He's very committed to her. Um, yeah, so his dad sent me a photo on Saturday that his son had sent him, and it's him. Looks absolutely pissed. Arms, another bloke's arms round him, a few of them, and two women oh. with big cleavages standing behind them with big grins. <laughs> amazing, amazing. <laughs> He's having the time of his life Awful. after just one night. <laughs> oh, bless his oh, dear. Hopefully he's uh, following the advice on the list. So that was that joke. First, should we move on to challenges? Let's move on, man. Let's get some chess talk. How was your, Let's um... do challenges oh, yeah. and then... Then should we do yeah, the draw yeah. for the for the month's diamond membership? Should we do challenges nah, then the draw? Let's make them wait, man. I want to I want to discuss challenges. Come on, do it. Let's do it. How was your challenge? So I gave you the challenge of creating a stop motion type film uh, that was chess related because you're a creative guy. You like to stop motion, I believe. Um, and yeah, how did you get on? Um, so I did it yesterday, and I thought. It was going to be a bit like tricky because I don't actually do stop motion, even though you think I do stop motion. Yeah. I've done it maybe once <laughs> with my, my daughter. Um, <laughs> but I did have an app on my phone that I'd used in the past, so I just use that again. I've got this swan neck thing that I could put the phone in. And I thought I'd just create us a little movie to promote our chess club. Um, I printed out some stuff, I cut some characters out. Um, and I put together a little 20 second movie and uh, yeah, you've seen it, haven't you? What, what's your verdict on that? I loved it, man. It was old school. It looked like an old like black and white type stop motion. It, it was really cute. I loved it. It's uh, very nice. I loved the the er, the erecting of the, of the what? bishop. The, what do you mean? Did I watch the wrong... <laughs> hey, have I watched the wrong thing? I swear on the stop motion thing. The, well, I, didn't okay. view it as, I didn't view it as the erecting of the bishop. I just viewed it as like the bishop was just like he was about to set it up on the chessboard. Right, it was rising okay, okay. into a position yeah. that enough. was sort of pointing upwards so that okay, the banner okay. saying club, average Joe's chess club, the banner could hang off it. Because obviously if the bishop was pointing downwards, it would have fallen off. Ah, uh, it's very true. Very logistically speaking, yeah, you got a point. Uh, yeah, yeah, my mind just kind of saw it differently, but I loved it, man. Let's whack it on Instagram. See what everyone else thinks. Yeah, put it on Instagram. I'll put it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, send, I think send we're us up your to opinion. Twenty followers now, by the way, on Instagram. So we're getting there. Wow. Yeah, I looked 20. at the leader, and I think Lionel Messi might be up there. I think he's got something like one hundred and fifty million or something. So we any day now, I reckon we'll uh, be knocking on his door. Who's Lionel Messi? He's a, <laughs> he, he does play chess, so we sh he should be on your radar. I think he he'll, we'll get him on the show. We should, we should. I don't think he's a busy man. Let's get him on. But yeah, I enjoyed that one, Joe. Has enjoyed the uh, well. Actually, I did stop motion twice this week, so I did stop motion. Um, but as you know, I've got a herniated disc in my back. 
and so I had to take codeine occasionally, um, and that also stops your motion. You so it can it really it can bung you up, and also it's. Do you know what this the worst thing about this herniated disc is? It's it's taken away one of my greatest pleasures, um, t- playing chess on the toilet. Oh, but that is, we've discussed it before. Chess on the toilet. A lot of people do that, mm. don't they? Wow, beautiful. Um, can't beat it. And can't beat it. You sort of got your own space. You're not going to be disturbed, etc. And I just can't sit down for very long anymore. That's why I'm doing this lying down. You know, it's just sort of getting a little bit of Wait, pain. Is that what you're doing? Down. Are you having a poo right now? <laughs> is that? <laughs> I haven't tried pooing lying down, Joe. First, but yeah, it's been a week of double stop motion. But yeah, enjoyed that. Let us know what you think if you watch it. Tell us if you like it and um, or oh, join our club after good. watching it. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. your no challenge this week, last week was to um, just create a playlist. It was a nice one for you. Create a playlist, Easy put stuff. it on Spotify. Something a playlist of music to play for people to play chess to. Exactly. How'd you get Easy. On? Easy stuff. I was thinking of going down two different routes um basically i like one of two things either really relaxing music to play chess to mm-hmm. or really energetic kind of like if i'm playing burly like a bit more up uh, upbeat i went with the relaxing side of things so it's a lot of just smooth jazz numbers and it's just it's nice it's yeah easy listening uh, it's, uh, i think i can't wait bit, to have a listen yeah it's, it's not the most energetic <laughs> but if you like something a bit more chilled out then yeah go check out our spotify uh should be able to upload it? it tonight is it pretty shit it's pretty shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not good. But I want to make it like a weekly there. thing. I want to kind of upload different Ooh. playlists as well. Some more upbeat chess ones. It's actually so good. Like... It's good fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's good fun. So some more upbeat ones, some more kind of slow jazzy ones. And yeah, just, I don't oh, know Joe, first, what, a play... what about playlist battle? My playlist against your playlist. Well, that leads me on to the challenge that I've set you this week, actually. Oh, talk about it. What we got? Oh, so um, you sent me the challenge of creating a... Uh, a playlist that people can play chess to and obviously mm-hmm. we're not just average chess players but we're exceptional lovers so i want yeah. to create the sexiest playlist ever for people to go out and exceptionally love to oh what sort of loving any sort of loving or you're talking Actually, i'm gonna be i'm gonna be very vague with it you make of it what you will any kind of loving oh i like the sound of that oh yeah so yeah Let's just make... um yeah, you go and do what you got to do with that playlist. Um, I mean, I have and got then, a very sexy playlist uh, that I've got in the wings if you can't make one. Oh, like, you haven't I've, got one of them. Oh, I have, I have. It's... Oh, I hate that. The guy, the guy I went to uni with he used to live upstairs from me in our house. We shared it. Yeah. He had his own sexy time playlist every time the soundtrack to the Big Blue came on. And then I'd know <laughs> what he was up to, and he used to do these monkey noises on purpose. He'd be going, Ooh, ooh, ooh. Even when he was in there on his own, he just did it to wind me up. Genuinely, yeah. I could be like going to sleep one in the morning and the soundtrack to the big blue comes on and I go, ooh, ooh, oh, oh, no. ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, But the difference between me and him is I've never actually put mine into action. Like it's never seen okay. the daylight. That playlist has okay. been dormant for about four years now. Is that because, uh, let's not discuss why, the- but... Just, yeah. There could be reasons. So I'll create this sexy playlist, and people can exceptionally love to it. I mean, let, let's you know, I've put no smart. They could be loving their pasta, couldn't they? They could be loving. Yeah, I ain't I eating that know. pasta. <laughs> 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 what type of pasta do you like when you're loving Joe? <laughs> oh, we could do a whole episode on that. To be f- oh, I had a lovely um, meatball linguine last night. Oh, so did you? It was really good. That was in Wales. That was, yeah, shout out to the place that did that. I can't remember the name, so I can't give like an official plug, but it was bloody good. Oh, sweet. Was, yeah, not too sweet. It was more of like a savoury type thing. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nice. Do you know, I was actually looking at playlists this week on Board Panda, and, oh, yeah. um, you know, people create playlists based on, um, I like, for example, it could be um, the giving birth playlist. And then they give songs mm. like, uh, first song is Baby is on the way. Second okay. song is Get in the car. Third song is... So all the titles of the song explain a story. Right, and it's okay. actually about the titles rather than the music. I mean, who bothers to do that shit? I can... yes. Would you do that? <laughs> no, what a fuck. That's just <laughs> stuff over the top. <laughs> Join your Christ, challenge. Man. Yeah, go on. What am I doing? Okay. So, your challenge is all about nonsense. 
-hmm. So talking nonsense, another word for talking nonsense is talking double Dutch. Have you heard that phrase? Someone's I talking double like Dutch, or they'll say that's mm. all Dutch to me. It's a oh, phrase yeah, that just means you talk. I guess because Dutch is a hard language for uh, people who speak English to get their heads around to understand. Uh, I think the sounds are quite different to, to what we're used to. Um, so I know you always tend to play the same opening, don't you, for uh, Black? You play... Um, the Scandi, don't modern Scandinavian with the I do, I knight, do. I like to, knight to c3 sort of thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yep. um, have you ever played the Dutch? Um, no, I haven't, you know. I don't think okay, I it keeps coming up against me when I play, and I play badly against it, even though I know some, some sort of traps to use against it. And you know, it, but I, I see it a lot, and I'm not exactly sure how to tackle it. So today I thought, okay. well, let, let me try it out, and I quite enjoyed playing it i don't really understand the lines i haven't learned it yet but the principle of it um i got got my head around and then just took it from there and i tried to use things that people have used against me when i was doing it so what i want you to do really simple and it's for your chess development here is to learn the dutch and play the dutch you know see how you get on with it move away from the scandal you could do it on a different account if you don't want to lose your precious rating on whatever okay. account you've got but don't forget there's the double Dutch element. So I don't just want you to learn the Dutch. What I want you to do is to learn Dutch. So if you could <laughs> then... <laughs> <laughs> you need to be fluent in Dutch. But now oh, what I want easy. you to do is next week report back to me on how you've got yeah. on. But I want you to do that section in Dutch if you could. <laughs> I want at least oh, a I like that. in Dutch. Yeah, um, and so one of our club members, JWVC Chess... Um, who I also follow on Twitter. He's well into uh, puzzles and stuff like that, reading puzzles from books. Yeah. He's a real sort of chess scholar. Um, okay. But he's also Dutch, um, oh, and he's agreed to uh, rate and critique your Dutch and your Dutch accent. So <laughs> oh, I'm going to offend some people with this. Aren't I? This ain't going to be good. <laughs> so you've got a week to learn a bit of Dutch and a bit of Dutch, a bit of double Dutch. How's that sound Challenge to you, accepted. Jokers? I love that. That's really good. That's beautiful. And I also, like that. okay. thank you, JWVC Chess, for agreeing to help out. Really appreciate it. Yeah, sorry in advance, mate. <laughs> as he's in the chess club jokers what a beautiful lead to our our diamond membership one month chess club giveaway oh. draw that you have got prepared on your screen in that sort of clever so, technical way you've done with the spinny wheel that's it so not to brag but i've got quite a large spinny wheel in front of me and what i'm going to do is I'm going to spin said wheel. Uh, we've got one till to, uh, 23 in numbers because there's 23 Hold numbers on. in the pot uh, yeah, there's, there's 23, yeah, but we're two of them. We don't want to win. Why don't you do oh, one God. to, like, 21? Nah, we'll just, we'll avoid us. Spin like, again. We'll skip us in the thing. So, so, so the, uh, should we say, like, Jesse's in the club, but I think as he's a national master, Jesse Cohen uh, is in our chess club as a national master. I think chess.com give you a diamond membership for free. I think so. I'm pretty yeah, sure. So we'll bypass so, any masters. We'll bypass. And also, we've got Judith in the club, and that, as Judith works for chess.com, um... She must get a membership for free. We'll leave Judy out as well. Everyone else, you're in the draw. Um, and so this is for a one-month... I forgot what's it for, Joe. For one-month time and membership That's to so chess.com. And I think if Let's you're already it, a member, if you're already a member, I think you could just add it to your membership. It just means you renew it a month later. Probably, don't quote me on that. But That's what All I'd right. do if I own chess.com. Ow, so I'm going to spin the wheel. I'm going to need to spin it, Joe. Okay, while it's spinning, I want you to really just get the... Get the bloody party started. I want to get some momentum here. Okay, you ready? Joe. Three, no. two. Joe, I'm lying on my back here. Do it. Go for it. There we go. We're off. It's spinning. I'm lying it's on spinning. my back with a <laughs> herniated disc. <laughs> I'm trying spinning. to get some momentum and excitement going. And, and it's failing. gone to... Who we got, Joe? Number first? one. Oh, number one. I played number one twice last night. Number one. Who is it? One sec. Let me have a look. twice. We're having some good banter. Number one is Orange Knight 73 from the US, who actually okay. joined our club 16 hours ago, and he's already oh, getting that one month diamond membership. And we will get in touch. I think Orange Knight is a platinum member at the moment, so they're going to get an upgrade for the month. 
Wait, so how do you know Orange Knight? Is he a listener of the podcast? Or? Yeah, Orange Knight 73. Everyone listens to the podcast, Joe, first. But uh, <laughs> Orange Knight 73, uh, I played them at chess last night. And we were oh, just fun. having a bit of, bit of banter. Um, I think what it is, I said that their, their icon, which is a knight in this big orange circle, had intimidated me. And that's the reason I lost. <laughs> and from that, we just started having a bit of chat. Oh, that's cute. Oh, congrats on the uh, the one month then. Fair enough. Excellent. Should we do it again for this week, Joe? First, another one month. How about should, oh, yeah? we, should we spice Are it up? Are like spin about... again now? No, Joe. First. Oh, next week. I'm, I'm still, still, next to, week. still getting used to this format, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're acting like I should be like bloody Bruce oh. Forsyth and just as uh, some game show it, whiz kid. Yeah. You love that spin the wheel business, don't you? Oh, it's I fun. can just picture you on one of those. There is spin a show, I think, on wheel. TV, <laughs> wasn't that? What was it called? Jeopardy or something? You spin that wheel. Oh, okay, I can yeah. picture you hosting yeah. that. Oh, I'd love that. Oh, if you're a that. TV producer listening in and you want Jofers to be on your show spinning your wheel. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> oh, you might get a job lot like, in an online casino or something. Maybe that's what I reckon it's, happen. it's doable. You never know. You're good at it. I mean, Thank you. you spun that really well. Well done, Joe Fuzz. <laughs> so I think, we... <laughs> no, what are you on about? <laughs> should we uh, spice it up this week? Should we say like a one month again? So another one month diamond membership. But this week you've got to join the club um, and rate us on uh, on our exceptional loving. So they have to I have like a session it. of exceptional loving with you, Joe Fuzz. Let's spice it further and have like a flaming wheel, like a wheel on fire. Oh. Oh, now we, are you going to spin it? Well, no, because it's on my laptop, so my laptop would just be on fire, wouldn't it? it would so be we set fire to your laptop with the blowtorch. <laughs> it would be pretty gnarly. So hold on, it? what have people got to do, Joe, first? They've got to join our club, but if you're yep. already in, you're eligible as well. Um, oh, should we just say leave us a review or follow the show yeah, nice. or do something? Obviously, you yeah. could let us know, but we're probably not going to check anyway, so <laughs> you probably don't have to do that. Just join our club. Would link nice, though, is yeah. in the description. Link is in the description to this podcast. And um, I think that's it, Joe. First, shall we, uh, shall we just move on to our next thing? Is it the topic? No, it isn't, Joe. First, because I was thinking it has been a very special week for uh, one of our family members this week. It is, it is. Um, and that is your mum, just because I can see you've got that blank look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew, I knew. <laughs> so it was your mum's uh, birthday this week, wasn't it? Um, it was, and me, it yourself, and your brother Luca, we treated her to a, a year diamond membership at chess.com, which she is over the moon with, isn't she? We're giving our memberships left, right, and centre, aren't we? Oh, <laughs> God, we really are. You're going to have the to get one soon, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to get one. <laughs> I think so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but she's loving it. She's loving that one month diamond membership. Yeah, you know what? If you're in our club and you actually want a one month free trial, we could sort that out as well, can't we, Joe? First one month free trial to chess.com instead of the usual one week. We could sort that out for people, I'm sure. I did not know this. Uh, can you hook yeah, me up with one? <laughs> really? <laughs> if you want. Oh, we can please. hook you up, Joe, first. Anybody else, get in touch. We'll do that for you. Um, but your mum's really happy with it. So all I was going to say was it was her. She had, we got it for her birthday. It was a special birthday. And that birthday is the same as one of the bullet time controls, isn't it? As in like 60 seconds? 60 seconds, yeah. She That's was 60, uh... weren't she? So um, I just made some notes on bullet chess that I thought were quite interesting. Uh, obviously, I can't find them now that I need them. But uh, if you just fill a bit of space, Jokers, while I look for them. Right. Yeah, good good the space awkward filling, silence right? just fill the air. I've got them. So, oh, uh, Jofers, who is currently the highest rated bullet player on chess.com? You know what? I'm going to go straight in there. I'm going to go with Hikaru. And who is number two? I'm going to go with Magnus. And who is number three? I'm going to... Oh, fuck. Um, I'm going to go with... Oh, jeez. Um, Ali Reza, maybe? No, nah, man. This one... No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Danya, Danya. Danya? Yeah, it surprised it me. Is. I didn't I knew realize he, was up, he was up there on bullet. Yeah, I should have done is. this in Quizmaster voice, shouldn't I? Sorry about that. Um, yeah, re okay, well, I'll just overdub it with your Quizmaster voice. Thank you, if you could. Um, but did you know that this is what surprised me here with these facts, is that Hikaru has had 11,514 wins and 1,626 losses. So 11,000 to 1,000 
approximate ratio. That's just crazy. It's bizarre, man. But Magnus, so Hikaru, 11,000. Magnus, 3,319 wins. Only 3,300. I know he's probably got like other accounts he plays on. How many losses, though? I bet he ain't got many. 1,480. No, sorry. Yeah, 1,481. Possibly, if that's his numbers I'm looking at. But maybe not. Really? But this is the one I, I wanted to say to you was, Daniel, yeah. right, he beats them all 42,115 wins. Bloody hell, man. The guy's an but, animal. Absolute machine. But this is what doesn't make sense. It says he's won 42,000, but it says he's lost 85,000. So it says he's <laughs> lost double what he's won. I'm not kidding. Look it up on chess. No, no, I don't think you're kidding. I just think you're getting lost in your notes. I think your notes this are absolute nonsense. This is also nonsense. a possibility. <laughs> Honestly. I think you're tired. Well, I think you're high thought... on your codeine. <laughs> How is it possible to win, to lose more than you've won and you're the third highest bullet rated player? How? It's not. How? It's not. It's not possible. Why which am I not the third highest rated? I've lost a because... lot more than I've won. Because you're a bloody coding addict, like you're too high to be competing. <laughs> <laughs> look it up, look it up. Okay, oh, and then your last little look. fact here. How many bullet right. chess games were played on chess.com each day, or are played each day on chess.com okay, okay. as of January 23rd? No, January it's 2023, I mean. I'm going to say 3 million. No, no, no. As in not people, but like actual games. I'm going to say mm -hmm. 50 million. No, nah, man, it's a bit high. The answer, Jofas, is 2.5 million. 2.5 million games a day. It doesn't shock you because you thought it was 50. <laughs> to me, like, wow, two and a half million games of bullet. Have people got nothing better to do? I mean, I'm one of them. I but personally don't. <laughs> there is nothing better to do than chess, is I there? I think I contribute to about 50,000 of those daily games. You reckon? <laughs> I reckon so. <laughs> Love my bullet. Oh, Jofers, that's it, man. That's bullet done. Uh, let's talk about openings. Ooh, let's do it. The big topic, man. Oh, uh, we've, uh, we've got Jesse on board again this weekend. We national master Jesse Cohen is um, we have going to give us some uh, kind of master insights about openings and get some really good info, some really good tips that I've learned from, as always. Um, how should we kick this off, Al? Uh, well, we asked Jesse some questions, didn't we? We could start with that. But I was going to say, Jofas, you uh, are a man of very uh, little opening experience, aren't you? You really don't. True, true. You haven't experienced many openings, have you? You just... Um, <laughs> you just... I uh, refer to my notes at the start, Jofas. Okay. Enough with that smutty <laughs> laugh of yours. What I mean is, you you tend to stick with the same opening once you've found an opening that you enjoy. Yep. I'm not very you're adventurous. Like, I so like, currently I like, you play like the like Scandinavian. Thing, I think I like the mm -hmm. I like knowing what I'm doing in a chess game. I'm not very adventurous. You're a bit of a systems man. Would you like you do the London and the Scandi? The London and the Scandi, exactly. I just I don't like the idea of learning fifty different lines for each opening. Mm -hmm. like, I ain't got that much brain space. I'm not the most intelligent people. Ah, oh, you are, Joe. I think that's fair enough as well. Uh, Jesse mentions this in one of the answers later on, doesn't he? Does, he? he does. But he does. um, yeah. Do you think that? Playing those two openings is what's got you up to eighteen hundred. Or I know it's you've done tactics and all stuff like that, but do you think they're two good openings for people because they're systems? I think yeah, I think they're really handy because you can play them against pretty much anything. You kind of tweak it here and there, um, and also I think most people are prepped to play against e four openings. So when they see mm -hmm. the d four, uh, I think it kind of limits what they know, if that makes any sense. So a lot of my ratings did come from both the London as well as the Queen's Gambit. And mm -hmm. um, I just think D4 in general kind of, I don't think it puts you at an advantage necessarily because Jesse, again, in one of his answers kind of says, you should probably stay clear of the D4 unless you're like a, uh, less of a beginner, etc. He said like the, oh yeah, I won't spoil it, but essentially I just found playing D4, it just already puts people on the back foot a little bit because I mm -hmm. think like maybe 70% of games are probably E4. I might be wrong. <laughs> is it just like... <laughs> this is all there? just zero data, man. Well, I'm just talking out my eyes. You put me on the spot. What do you expect? <laughs> I don't do Could the you... whole improvised. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. Then what do we mean by system openings for people that are unfamiliar with this term? 
So essentially a system opening is uh, you can kind of play the same uh, kind of moves for this opening against pretty much anything. It is uh, it is what it is. You don't have to learn like a thousand variations for the opening. It's a kind of one size fits all essentially. Mm -hmm. So with the London, for instance, you put your pawn out, you bring your bishop out, you bring your knight to there, you do that, you do that. It's a bish bash bosh. That's your London. And you can play that against almost anything. Mm -hmm. Do you find is that... that right? um... Yeah, I'll give you that one, Joe. First, that's good enough, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you find that people aren't that prepped against things like the London? I think so. I think, I think everyone's just at my rating anyway, and your rating. Like, unless you're at a grandmaster rating, I think most people are just so focused on their own opening they're not even paying attention to what you're playing. So don't worry about it. <laughs> I know stupid, you often but... focus. Do you focus on your own opening quite a lot? Then would you say, or do you like <laughs> to think about your opponent's opening while you're playing? I think I, yeah, I focus on my own opening a bit too much. I'm like Do that you? guy at my work who uh, borrows my friend's mirror and goes into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's, Refer um, to episode yeah, uh, 19, anybody yeah, out there, yeah, if you want to hear that story about Joe's colleague in the mirror. Yeah. So, Joe, first, what did we ask Jesse? Should we, should we kick into that? Yeah, let's go for it. So I think our first one, um, we kind of just asked about opening traps and uh, are they worth learning? Because it is quite a... Uh, I don't know. The fun when they when they do pay off, but uh, uh -huh. when they pay off enough to warrant using them, I don't know. What do you think before we go into the uh, the voice? Um, I went down re like maybe a year ago. I learned opening traps, and I was trying to always trap people and and use these traps. You know that um, GJ Chess, the Bam guy on bam. YouTube. Yeah. Bam him. Well, he has loads of opening trap things. I used to watch them, and I knew knew quite a few of them. I've actually pretty much forgotten them, and I think I've forgotten them on purpose um, because I think they were just making me play crap chess. I think genuinely they were not doing me any good. So I think it's good to know traps so that you don't fall into them. Um, I do always use the same opening trap against uh, the Karakhan, um, which seems to work a lot and lets me win their queen. Yeah, uh, nice. Um, which is sort of, oh, I can't go into it because it'd be too hard for me to explain. Uh, but yeah, I do use that quite a bit. But other than that, I think it's good to be aware of them. It's good to have a few up your sleeve, but I don't actually play for them, uh, if if you know what I mean. But yeah, should we play with Steve? What about yeah, you, I just wanna, can I, Well, I was just going to add about falling for traps and stuff. Just reminded me while I was on holiday. Uh, my partner's dog just started digging up the sand on the beach and made this massive hole. And we're like, oh, bless her. And then my partner then fell in that hole. And we we're just saying, oh, you're so simple because <laughs> <laughs> you're falling into this dog's uh, bit hole that they've driven. Blah, blah, blah. Falling into saying, a oh, dog's so hole. Simple. Carry on. Yeah, essentially. And then, um, yeah, I, I fell into the exact same hole about three minutes later. And we were just, we were like, what kind of IQ do we have that we're just getting out fucked by this little dog? <laughs> it was just yeah, it was really annoying. But um, so you yeah, you fell in into traps, a dog's hole opening trap. Exactly, it's the yeah the best gambit, man. Um, but yeah, in terms of traps, I don't necessarily use traps per se, but a certain things within like the London, for instance, where I wouldn't say it's a trap, but I'd say it's how can I put it, a way to punish your opponent if they do something slightly uh slightly wrong. Um, mm -hmm. so there's one where if they a castling uh, short, but they fee and keto their bishop. You can just attack them with the h-pawn. And if you've got your bishop on a slightly different square, I can't think off the top of my head, but basically protecting that pawn, you can just push the pawn out of nowhere. So Harry the h-pawn, it was a ginger GM, one who taught me. Uh -huh. And uh, you just push that h-pawn all the way up. And then before you know it, they've castled and they've got this h-pawn that's like just knocking on the door just about to kind of mess them up. So um, they have to kind of, you should pay attention to little things. It's not really a trap, but you can it's get sort of punished tactics in those kind of situations. And traps, tactics yeah. and traps within an exactly. opening that will give you an advantage. Oh, I like that. It's very true. But yeah, let's play Jesse's answer. Cause Go he, for it. I mean, we're here waffling a load of bollocks. There's someone who's actually answering. <laughs> We've answer, got like so a national master who could actually give us the answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is it. There's only a couple opening traps worth learning. For example, the center fork trick, which isn't even much of a trap. It's more of just something that you need to know how to do, period. I often discourage people from learning opening traps because in a way it's a form of hope chess and it trains people to form bad habits. There we go. Uh, beautiful stuff as always. And yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, what? Are it... you familiar with that center fork trick that Jesse was talking about? You know what? I didn't have time to Google it. I'm think i might be wrong but is it the one where i don't know of, man 
Uh, you, you don't know either. I should <laughs> I look into it. We probably Jesse. forfeit his trap all the time, so thank you, Jesse, for bringing it up because we don't actually know the name of it, so it'd be good to kind of <laughs> actually prep against it now. Uh, he, Jesse said about hope chess, and it is hope chess. You just hope they fall into that trap. Exactly. So true. So true. So yeah, I, I um, agree. I think it's a bad habit. I think be aware of them, but mm-hmm. maybe learn a few, but don't play for them. Oh, I think that's the best way to do it. Unless um, I quite enjoy, enjoy the next question as well. That. Uh huh. What was the next one? Uh, it was just about openings to avoid and whatnot because the certain oh, ones yeah. you do here. I don't know. It's just like a shit talk about certain openings and there. So. Mm-hmm. It's, um, this is what Jesse had to say anyway about uh, openings. Should you avoid certain ones? Should you kind of, yeah, treat him as though they're a plague and just kind of keep your distance? This is what he said. I don't think that there's any openings that should be avoided, especially in Blitz. Getting to play a variety of openings and get familiar with a variety of different circumstances so that you can be more of a universal player is a good thing to do. However, on that same note, I will say that it's also important to find a series of openings that you play consistently and stick with them. In fact, it's a very, very common and big mistake that non-masters switch their openings a lot. Even as a non-master, I only had a couple backup openings, but instead of mixing it up here and there, and there was no you know, chessable or people telling me online to switch my openings every darn day. And so I just stuck with the same ones day in and day out. And I looked at a lot of masters that played my openings and I just look at how, what moves and ideas that they play. And I just basically steal them. Um, Again, the great thing about chess compared to a lot of areas of life is that plagiarism is totally normal. It is totally cool to steal other people's moves and ideas. There is no copyright in chess. So yeah, there you go. There's no openings to avoid, especially at Blitz. Um, And yeah, you should just become a universal player and kind of learn positions and whatnot. Um, But at the same point, um, so I'm going to... So there's two voice notes that kind of merge together there. And uh, yeah, he said you should also um, kind of find ones that work for you and have some kind of consistency with your opening. So kind of like me with my Scandi and my uh, London. So essentially, I don't know, kind of goes for both sides to a certain extent. And so you should... Learn a lot of openings, but you should kind of have the select few that you kind of use more consistently. I think it's a good point. I think it's good to know and be aware of openings and be able to play various openings, but become more of an expert in, you know, two or three or four. Mm-hmm. What are those openings know. for you? What are your expert openings? Okay, well, the very unpopular King's Gambit is something I really enjoy for yeah, one. Yeah. I can't say I'm an expert at it, but I did one of the chessable courses. Um, the reason I like it, I think it just leads to interesting games. A lot of opponents don't know how to play against it. Mm. Um, it doesn't put me at an advantage, but what it means is it, it sort of gets them off playing these formulaic type moves. And we just have interesting games. They're always quite open games. I much prefer open than closed games. Um, yep. Open being I can move my pieces around a lot. Whereas closed, obviously, like pawn structures, close the board down, we can't move. I much prefer open type games. So King's Gambit for me with white. I did used to play the London myself. I've forgotten a bit about it. And then I switched to the Jabava London, you know, where you move yeah, the knight yeah. to C3. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've just started that again, actually. I'm quite enjoying that because I'm getting a bit fed up. I want to switch it up. So I think I'm going to switch it up to, to those three. When I'm playing black, I tend to play the King's Indian Defence or the per- Perk. But, um, perk, Pierce. Pierce, Perk. But the thing with those, they, they do lead for me to a lot of closed positions and I'm getting a bit bored with them, which is why um, I'm going to start learning the Dutch as well. That's going to be my thing I'm going to get into, I think, which may also lead to closed positions for all I know. I don't know. But I thought I need to expand out a little bit. I just want to become familiar with a few more. Um, and yeah. I'll do what Jesse said, play them in a lot of Blitz games and just try them out. Yeah, exactly. Not worry about ratings, just play the I game. I like what he said about the goes. whole no plagiarism thing in chess. Like, there's no copyright. That's it. Still, chess moves you can. So, when it comes to chess, yeah, I'm the first person to be stealing. I'm uh... To be fair, you in bastard. general, in life, I'm the first person to be stealing. I'm from you Birmingham. You bastard. It's, like, <laughs> it's in my blood, it's in my genetics. It's, uh, but it's true, you should. If you see a good move or you see a good opening, just take it, man. Just uh, That's yours. It's fair game, isn't good. it? Good sound advice. I like that, Joe. First, what what was the next thing we asked him? 
so it was all to do with like the best way to learn an opening. Um, oh, so, yeah. yeah. Should, do you want to tell me how you learn yours or should we go straight into the... Uh, yeah, no. Um, well, okay. Well, I tend to learn mine either through just playing them. So one thing I've been doing lately is using that. I, I mentioned it before, the Andras Toth course of Center. Yeah. And where I've just played for the centre, so I'm probably playing certain openings that have got names, but I don't know what they are, I'm just playing them. But if I actually want to learn a set opening, I'll watch a YouTube video. Um, so I watched a lot of National Master Robert Ramirez videos for the yeah. King's Indian type stuff. Um, and I'll watch YouTube videos to learn the opening, and then I'll probably buy the chessable course. But I right, do okay. find the chessable course is a little bit intense, a little bit too in-depth. Um, there are just so many lines and so many things you have to be aware of. I can't memorise all those lines. I can't be asked to memorise all those lines. Um, so that's pretty much how I learn. And then just through playing and repetition playing, seeing what works, trying new things out each time. As I say, don't worry about my rating. It always drops when I learn new openings anyway. Um, in fact, it always drops anyway. But what about yourself, Joe? First? <laughs> what do um, you do? That, that's the annoying thing. I don't learn new openings. I'm staying. <laughs> okay. I don't need to learn new to openings. Ask. Put Jesse on. Shut up. Put oh, Jesse no, on. Go on. What's Jesse <laughs> saying? There we go. Honestly, I think the best way to learn openings is to have somebody experienced in that opening teach you. Otherwise, there are a few good books, but it can become so overwhelming with the number of moves to memorize and the number of ideas you need to know that many a player, even someone like me, can become easily demotivated and not want to learn more openings. This is why top-level players crap on openings like the London System or the King's Indian, because um, it's one of those universal openings you can play as both white and black basically against anything and get a decent game and they don't like the fact that it's so easy to learn and results in pretty solid difficult to crack positions so yeah it's um essentially just find someone who knows about that opening find someone who's experienced in it um I i've personally... never had that other than a youtube experienced person really? i guess we need to start going to chess clubs and hanging around but with yeah. chess people but even with ourselves, though, like you could genuinely teach me about the King's Gambit because I know genuinely sod all about the King's Gambit. I know True. nothing, so you could True. you could be my introduction to that. I could be your introduction into uh, like whatever I play. Uh, but you know the stuff I play. But yeah, you definitely know some openings that I have no clue about. But um, what I would say is some random advice. Don't go up to some randomer asking about certain openings. Say if you're <laughs> interested in like the monkey bomb opening or something like that. Just kind of make sure they are an expert in that field because yeah, and that some they play chess. Yeah, yeah. They are. Good point, Joe. There's good sound advice there. Always good to put a disclaimer in the podcast as well. Well done. Exactly, exactly. Um, so what Number was the next question now? Uh, and the next return ask me. That's why I keep asking you, Joe, because I, I haven't gotten written it was down. It to do with recommendations, wasn't it? General recommendations. Should you oh, play yeah. what he had to say? Yeah. In terms of recommendations, let me just say this. Typically, if you're a beginner in chess, I recommend that you stick with E4. Not only is it more simple to learn, in my opinion, however, it'll introduce you, more importantly, to tactics more often. And tactics are such an important part of chess. you got to get good at it. You've got to learn how to spot them in real games, most importantly. However, the true answer here is that there are many good openings out there and a player should look at a lot of different openings and try out a lot of different openings and ultimately select the opening that gives you the most pleasure to play. If you are enjoying the opening you play, you're naturally going to find better moves. And if you are playing an opening that everyone says is great, but you ultimately don't like those situations, then you're going to be miserable and you're going to end up playing miserable moves. So one more time, if you are more of a beginner to intermediate type of player, AKA you have a rating less than 14, 1200 ish, um, then I would recommend openings that are like the four nights game, the four nights scotch, the four nights, Spanish, maybe the pianissimo version of the Gioco Piano, something that is a bit more predictable, quiet, and repeatable. Um, again, there's also the London system, there's also the King's Indian Attack and King's Indian Defense that you can play basically as any opening. I know players that do that. 
So, uh, completely contrary to what I said earlier about how <laughs> I go for D4 and because <laughs> um, it just puts people on the back foot. Actually, you should probably uh, yeah. stick to E4. And I do agree with him. I think I was just talking bollocks earlier. No, I'm not in a position to be that. a podcast I, host. Obviously, Jesse knows what he's on about, but also I don't because I've made notes on Jesse's answers and I wrote four pounds. But now I realise that four pound p- sign is, is an E, isn't it? I've been staring uh, yeah. at that thinking, <laughs> why have I put beginner four pounds, but beginner use E4. I mean, these are the prices for when you pimp me out, innit? It's like you really <laughs> don't rate me highly. What would you do for four pounds, Joe, first for someone? Uh, what wouldn't I do for four pounds, honestly? It's, that's that's true, actually. Um, give Joe four pounds, send in your request. <laughs> we'll send Joe first. Uh, yeah, so I like that. The, the thing that's important for me here, enjoy it. And that's yep. the thing. Like, I enjoy the King's Gambit. I know it's not the best opening, I know that. Uh, a lot of people shit on it. A lot of people say it's real mm-hmm. crap, but I enjoy playing it. And I, that's why I probably it. stick with it, enjoy the games. And when 100%. I do win with it, they're quite enjoyable victories because they're, they're sort of nice open games where anything can happen. No, I, I highlighted the same note from that voice note um, about how you should play the play, the openings that give you the most pleasure. And I was saying, uh, yeah, I just made a note that my openings actually bring quite a lot of pleasure to my opponents because I'm just really shit at them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, they give your opponents pleasure, did you say? Oh, God, yeah, they love it. They love it. When I whack out the London and I've got every single move wrong, they're just, oh, mate, they're rubbing their hands together, they're loving it. You're so generous. You are, oh, you're you're the most generous guy, man in chess. Thank you. So, yeah, next one, Jofers. I think, I think that was it, mate, wasn't it? I think that was it. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know why have I got more notes then that says four nights, scotch, Jocko Piano. Oh, they were part of earlier answers, weren't they? I think, ow, oh, the codeine's kicking in. I think you, oh, you need to have a mate. bit of sleep. Do you know what? I, um, I've i downloaded a book and I, I have listened to some of it. Uh, chess opening names, the fascinating and entertaining history behind the first moves. Okay. Uh, by somebody called, um, I wish I could read my writing, maybe Nathan something. But yeah, it's quite interesting. <laughs> nice of you to give him a shout out. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get a lot of work after something. that. Uh, well done for, way for doing that book. There's actually two volumes to this book, you know, Joe Fuss. So, and it's like the history between all of the um, all of the chess openings, like who, and like the players who's who they're named after and stuff. It's quite an interesting book. I'll put a link to it in the description if anybody else uh, wants to listen. Joe Fuss, we're nearly coming to the end of this. I just wanted. To say before we get to the end, as uh, as it is National Wife Appreciation Day today, why it's not actually, share this? It is. Why not okay. share this uh, podcast with your wife or somebody else's wife or somebody you want to be your <laughs> wife and give them the pleasure of the average Joe's Chess podcast Ooh. and oh. see what it'll do for your love life. I think just share this podcast <laughs> with with that special wife or wife to be in your life. Oh, that's a beautiful advert. Huh? Thanks, Joe. Do you mind if I put some yeah. like emotional or sexy music behind that? Please, oh, please do. Uh, yeah, it's actually National Wife Appreciation Day. I did not there make that up. Somebody did, but not me. <laughs> Joe, oh, yeah, let's, let's, money let's finish up with, as usual, Joe Fizz, have you been exceptionally loving something this week? So many things. It was hard to kind of Ooh. pinpoint one, but um, the one I'm going to go with is, it sounds stupid, but just wet suits, man. How bloody good are wet suits? <laughs> They're so Wearing good. them or looking at people in them? Both. <laughs> it's just that I was in awe of them, man. Put one Does on this weekend. Does anybody ever it... look good in a wetsuit? Can you? Is it well, possible? this is what... I... I've got a story about that. So it was it was freezing cold in Wales. Oh, I had to put one on. No, and I knew... I oh, no. And I knew I'd have to put one on. And I said to uh, Charlotte <laughs> on the drive down, because I don't know if you know, but the whole holiday was with her family. It's my first time going on holiday with them. Uh, and I was just saying, like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to have to wear a wetsuit, aren't I? And she was like, yeah, why? Like, why are you nervous? I was like, they are the most revealing things ever. It's like, <laughs> and I'm going to be with your family. It's going to be so embarrassing. They're so revealing. And she was there nervous as well. She's like, this is going to be awful. And then me and her went to the wetsuit hire shop. I put the wetsuit on. And she was pissing herself with laughing. And I was almost crying because it was revealing, but not to my crotch, but to my belly. Like, my belly just looked <laughs> massive. You couldn't see anything in the crotch department. Like, there was nothing revealing down there. And I was just like, this is just a midlife crisis, man. I thought it'd be, like, kind of complimentary. But I just looked awful. It was so bad. 
Could you have not shoved a couple of chess pieces down the bottoms or something? I, just I don't have the flexibility to kind of maneuver them down there. It was awful. Yeah, I couldn't get Wet past the belly and... fat. Oh, they're just not very flattering, are they? They don't look good, do they? But yeah, I've been exceptionally loving them because even if they don't look good, they bloody they feel good oh. and they protect you. They're nice. Did you pee in it? I did. She peed in hers, which I thought was very classy. That was mm-hmm. a bit of a. I don't know, a bit of a red flag, but no, nah, I didn't get to pee in mine because um, <laughs> it, it was five quid for like six hours and I felt really bad taking such a good deal and then pissing all over it. Like, it would have just been really rude of me. The person that wore it before, you definitely pissed in it, Joe, because you know that. That's why I paid good money for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm nice, man. Uh, are you going to wear one? Are you going to wear one regularly now? I, mean, I think so. Li- seriously, think about this. If you turned up to work in a wetsuit tomorrow, mm-hmm. Uh, other than the fact that you've got this belly and and no genitals and stuff, what yeah. would they think? <laughs> um, I'd get a few Why head turns, you? I reckon. Why can't people just wear wetsuits to work? There's got to be a reason, and there's something in like the law, or I don't know. I'm no, gonna I look into know. it. I'll look be into my challenge it. for next week. Get back to us. Yeah. Oh well. Go on. What you've been exceptionally loving? Um, well, you know how you couldn't narrow it down. Well, every week mm-hmm. I can't narrow it down. And unlike you, I just don't bother. I'll just list Love what it. I've been exceptionally nice. loving. So a um, couple of things. First one is the ukulele. Again, been um, playing that. Do you call it an ukulele or a ukulele? I just go for the ukulele myself. Yeah, same here. Okay, so <laughs> I've been, I don't know why I said ukulele. I heard someone else say it, but it sounded good. Um, because I'm spending a lot of time lying on my back. I'm walking a yep. lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm still doing my like 15,000, 20,000 steps a day, whatever. Nice. But I just can't sit down. That position hurts. So I have to lie down. But I love playing guitar. It's a bit awkward when you're lying down. But the ukulele. Oh. So I've just been playing oh, it and learning a yeah, few few little tunes, few little jazz standards. Um, and my, my youngest daughter started playing it as well. And she played oh. it in the past and stopped. Now she's into it again. So... You know, that's a good thing with the back injury. It's got me Love playing that. the uke again. Uh, and the second thing, again, back injury related, is that even though it was a hot week this week, what I did, uh, I made sure I had a, a cold shower before bed, put my mm-hmm. fan on in my bedroom and slept in just a pair of pants so that it made me cold enough to be able to put my heated blanket on. So oh. I've got like a heated under blanket. Oh, my God. Everyone needs one of those in their Lovely. lives. Oh, like, I just move my foot. It's like you think it's hot, and then you move it an inch to the right, and it's just like moving it into this like a toasty hot pocket of, of bed. It's just beautiful. Oh, wow. oh, uh, got it's made me really as well, ain't you? I have just got got, my life. I just love heated stuff, so I can't oh, wait for the God. winter now, so I can just sleep on that heated blanket every night without having to have my fan on all night. Honestly, my anus did not know what had hit it when that winter at Christmas when, when I sat in your front seat. Oh, it was so toasty. It was lovely. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? I, I have it on, I have the car one on all the time and just put the air con on, even on hot days. Gorgeous. I just yeah. love it. Jofers, I just realised we didn't mention our chess champions. Uh, I've already revealed mine. Mine is Joe. Is not Jofers. That's you. Mine is John T. <laughs> Yep. John T is my chess champion. I'm going to give everyone more details about John T. We're going to start our training on, I think, the 27th of this month. I think we've got okay. scheduled in. We've got a plan, Joe, first. We, we, I'm not taking him on holiday, though. Um, <laughs> but actually, John T, I know you're going to listen to this uh, this week. Uh, I will take you on holiday if you're paying. I'm happy with that. Uh, Joe, go. first, Sorted. who is your champion? It is my partner, Charlotte. She's, uh, wow, she's going well, to... Wow, John T, you sound like a lovely guy. You sound <laughs> lovely and everything, but you're going to get mashed up, man. Charlotte's on it, I'm telling you. Seriously? Honestly. it's um. So, oh, yeah, we'll have to is... whack a YouTube video together, I think, so we can watch the uh, the game unfold. But I'm feeling confident, oh, man. This is going to be a battle. We need to... Okay, so this week we're going to schedule the dates in. We're going to work out when shit's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to obviously not follow that schedule whatsoever <laughs> and stuff will happen at some point in the future. But we're going to train... We're going to train our two non-playing chess champions up. They're going to battle it out. Yep. Oh, I can't wait. Have you spoke to your head coach? I've got Robert, National Master Robert Ramirez, top coach, ready. He's waiting in the wings, ready to give me some advice. You've spoken to, to, to National Master Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, National Master Jesse, man. He's going to be on the case. Is, well, I don't want him, because he's a good looking chap, I don't really want to get him doing one on one sessions with my girlfriend, so I'm going to do it through me. <laughs> hey, yeah, he's I a think married that's probably man. the safest. 
Yeah, he's oh, a okay, married man. Then. However, right. it is National Wife Appreciation Day, and I am slightly worried he'll take our advice, let his wife listen to the podcast. Ooh. You know, that can't be good for any relationship. It's can't. <laughs> it's can't. We're going to be breaking up relationships all over the shop, aren't we? We're oh, just let not us know. suitable for people. If we broke your relationship up, let us know. So, yeah, Jofers, <laughs> let's leave it there. If you've loved the show, pass it on, share it, rate us, join our chess club, do all that sort of stuff. We love it. It helps us out, and it means that we'll come back next week and do more exceptional loving for you. Jofers, should we go. leave it there? Anything yeah, to nice add? One, no, just thank you to anyone who does listen, because it does mean a lot, and it still, I don't know, it still baffles me that people listen to us. So yeah, you cool. made me... I've got tears running down my face. That sounded so good, Joe. First, <laughs> love it. Hi, <laughs> nice son. I'll catch you in a bit. Cheers, mate. Catch you later.